Hello, this is Ray from Moose Mods, and we're wanting to give you a, a narrated walk around today of the bull moose and many of the features that uh, have been incorporated into what has really turned out to be an outstanding package. I'm just absolutely thrilled with uh, how this has turned out for our use and appreciate all the interest from uh, many of you out there in looking at this LS3 engine package conversion. Uh, at the moment, we're going to give you kind of a view here of the uh, signature of this airplane, which is its nose. It uh, looks very turbinesque with this long profile nose, and there were many objectives that I had in designing this cowling. One was to certainly make it more attractive than what's generally available, uh, as well as certainly be efficient aerodynamically, as well as for cooling, and uh, certainly be something also that was um, aerodynamically improved from uh, many of the other options that are out there. So giving you a frontal view here of the propeller, in this case I used a, an 82 inch uh, hydraulic prop by Hartzell. Uh, many have asked why I didn't use uh, longer blades on this and a couple of reasons for that. I was interested in uh, ground clearance uh, on wheels and certainly water clearance on floats and so what I have here in its current position uh, sitting on its tail is 36 inches of clearance to the ground and in horizontal uh, flight attitude uh, 22 inches so we've got lots of good clearance. Going to give you a close-up here of some of our intakes. Uh, the upper one in the center of the screen is the oil uh, cooler intake. The lower is the uh, radiator with you can see a fan in there and uh, we really have a, what's turned out to be a very effective uh, updraft cooling system for the engine. You'll see also in the upper corner there a uh, NACA scoop. Uh, the intent there was just to blow some cold air over the headers. And as you've probably have seen from uh, other images on the website, these are a stainless steel four into one header on either side. Uh, objectives were uh, twofold. Uh, number one was to minimize much of the exposed uh, exhaust pipe in the uh, cowling to eliminate uh, as much heat generation as we could and the other frankly was kind of a cool factor and I'm really happy with how those have turned out. Uh, there is a, um, a perforated v, inverted v-cone installed in toward the end of the header pipe that does give some spark arresting and really does uh, quiet some of the bark a little bit so it's surprisingly uh, not very loud uh, with what we might have expected. Then you see the gills on the side of the cowling. There's two of those there. The formula for effective cooling on a liquid cooled engine such as this is that we have 150% exit air versus intake air. And we are right at that, if not perhaps a little bit better. And so I'm very happy with the uh, cooling on this engine. It just always sits at 176 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, showing you here also the um, main gear legs. These are stock moose legs uh, running 26 inch Goodyear tires and those serve my purpose as well. Uh, don't be surprised if you see something a little larger on there one of these days but for the meantime uh, really pleased. Uh, the wing is stock moose. Haven't done anything to that. I do have uh, LED uh, landing and taxi lights and then the extended moose tip. And then uh, what you're seeing here is the opened uh, gull wing door we have on both sides. I'm just a real proponent of ease of uh, entrance and egress, uh, particularly in the backcountry and loading stuff. And so this gives a nice big wide opening. Uh, I'm going to close this down for you a second. You can see also the uh, lower window. We give lots of extra glass on both sides. And from both pilot and co-pilot position, you really can see almost straight down, certainly in, well inside of the uh, wheel in flight. And obviously it's helpful for uh, ground ops as well. Here's the uh, stock uh, Murphy Moose uh, baggage door, big cavernous door. We've got lots of room inside. The uh, floor space from the firewall to this rear bulkhead, which is removable, is 120 inches. So we have lots and lots of room. And at the moment, I'm generally running this with just uh, two seats, but have two more for the back. And then there's a 38 inch uh, secondary baggage area we'll show you on the other side in a moment. I'm not sure if you can see the uh, rivet lines down the side of the uh, fuselage here too well, but did a lot of uh, reinforcements on the back end of this airplane to strengthen that. It's been one of the weak points. Uh, there's been some problems in both ground and water ops and did some significant things to increase that. You'll also see here 
a, a strut brace for the horizontal stabilizer. This is a big wide platform, a little over 11 feet, and I've seen a lot of these where on this uh, fiberglass fairing that I'm showing you, it's been a lot of cracking, which is indicative of a lot of movement of that stabilizer. So I've designed and installed this stabilizer strut brace. Um, honestly, there's some differing opinions about that. Uh, certainly happy to chat with any of you about that down the road, but I've been very pleased with the extra stability and strength that uh, this provides. Anyway, you're looking at the uh, upgraded Moose um, uh, horizontal stabilizer. Just taking another sweep up the side here. I think down the center you can see some of the rivet lines for some hat channel we've given in there. And then uh, bottom and corner and top corner wraps have all been reinforced as well. And that will be a part of the, um, the kit that we're making available for the upgrades, both to the Super Rebel uh, and to the Moose. Again, here you're seeing a stock uh, Moose elevator and uh, horizontal stabilizer. Have a big, wide uh, trim tab on the elevator. It's very effective. Does a nice job. And um, we have counterweighted uh, this section here for the um, elevator. And since we're getting significantly higher speeds out of this airframe than the other engines, uh, counterbalancing both the rudder and the elevator are, are really mandatory to make sure we don't uh, approach any problems with flutter. Then coming around the other side, here's that secondary baggage door I mentioned earlier. It's a much smaller door, but gives access to another 38-inch area back here. Uh, good for soft goods, light things, bulky things. And so that's another good point of access. Wanted to show you uh, a quick peek inside. Uh, we just went by the battery, which is underneath the co-pilot seat. But uh, what I did here was something very basic, very simple. Uh, I wanted to keep things very simple for backcountry operations. You'll see that I have some standard steam gauges, uh, a couple reasons for that. Number <laughs> one, I had them, so I decided to use them. And then you'll see an HSI. And I wanted to have this in there for uh, light IFR operations. Uh, I've really appreciated an HSI over the years with all of the, the hard IFR I've done, particularly in the twins. And it just makes life so much easier f operationally. Uh, you'll see here a couple of uh, gauges. The uh, large circle one with the uh, red buttons on the bottom is the SDS programmable gauge. Gives tremendous flexibility in adjustment for the air-fuel ratio, mix ratio mixtures. And then to the right of that is a fuel pressure gauge, uh, very critical to have that set correctly for the LS application. Then I just have a single NAVCOM transponder audio panel. And uh, looking up here at the uh, V-brace, have a much heavier V-brace. And then we're also designing uh, another application for the V-brace to attach it directly through the firewall to the uh, engine mount just to give more uh, sturdiness up in that area for download movements on hard landings uh, on uh, ground or water. So uh, hopefully this gives you a good overview of uh, what's going on here with the bull moose. Uh, see some gas struts there holding up the, um, the door. Uh, surprisingly, too, you can see an awful lot around this engine through these uh, rear gills. And so that's uh, helpful just from a pre-flight standpoint to uh, keep an eye on things. I have a lot to share with you later about some of the structural upgrades on the front of this airframe. That'll be a part of our upgrade kits for the use of the LS3 engine. Not particularly complicated, uh, very easy to install during original build. Uh, I did it after the fact, but certainly a very doable option uh, as well. The uh, propeller, by the way, has a three-inch hub extension on it, which does extend this nose, which has worked out well. Anyway, there you go. Stay tuned for more videos. Uh, thanks for your interest, and always feel free to give a call. Happy to chat and answer any more questions that you have. <laughs>